Hello, everyone. Yes, the title, we're being sciencey today. Because yesterday was a lot of opinion, like almost conspiracy theory type stuff. Step out of my comfort zone, went a little more negative than I normally like to be. Uh, Monday was just fluffy, so I thought I'd do something fact-driven. Because I am most comfortable dealing with things with a solid basis in fact. Uh, that's just me. Um, but first I have to do some housekeeping. You know what's coming. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com. Leanna K. Um, I am most comfortable with this form of, uh, of monetization for my channel. And I realized that today's topic has something to do with that. It's what kind of rejection are you most comfortable with? Um, uh, yes, because rejection and physical pain. This this uh, headline is actually somewhat inaccurate. It should say rejection and physical pain are similar to your brain. They are not the same as the first paragraph of this article uh, says that the brain doesn't process emotional pain and physical pain identically, but they are very similar uh, reaction and cascading events and the natural chemical that is released during events to dull that pain is, is similar as well. And different people have different levels of that pain-killing chemical. Ironically enough, Binky is on my desk right now, stabbing and chewing on my hand as we speak. Don't believe me. Here he is. Hi, Binky. Say hi to everybody. And he just clawed my yeah, I just clawed my neck. I am so used to cat scratches at this point. It's See, I was just like, whatevs. He just scratched me. That's how science works. I have sort of gotten used to the, um, the scratchies because of you, Binky. Because you are a demon. Yeah, there he goes. His work here is done. Um, thanks for the, the real life example, Binky. You do you, boo. Um, but... See, that, that's a shining example of I barely feel that. I've got like holes in my hand. You can't see it for all the freckles. There's like four, five holes where his claws were on my freaking hand. I barely felt it. They just look like freckles on camera. Um, but burn me? Oh my God, that is the worst form of physical pain on the planet. I hate being burned. I hate sunburns. I hate stove burns. I hate fire burns. I hate... Oh, ragey, like just, oh, I become unhinged. I hate that feeling. And there are other people who probably have similar, have, have opposite responses. Burning is okay with them, but scratching bothers them. Apparently that is somewhat genetic uh, from what I've read. And I think that the rejection instinct there, there is a genetic component in that they're finding more and more that intergenerational trauma on a physiological level is a real thing. I think that for everybody, there are some things we don't see as personal, some things we take very personally. And those are different things for each individual, but it, it's, it's, it correlates that the more personally someone takes something, the... Uh, the more rejection and therefore the more brain pain they will experience and, you know, they will produce less pain-killing chemical to blunt that. And I think this is really important to, to understand because this is just science. Like, this has been fairly consistent in terms of research since about 2012. I've been watching this for a while. Um, if this was just a new thing, I'd be a little bit skeptical. Like, oh, let's see if they can replicate it. But this is held at this point. And um, th this is important for, for two reasons. One is it really explains why certain op-eds or collections of op-eds about games and gamers created this collective roar as a response in gamers. They hit a nerve, they caused pain, and people lost their shit. And unfortunately, that that reaction was dismissed as being, you know, a moral weakness, proof that gamers are bad instead of what what I think it actually was, was a mass pain response. It, it was it was a traumatizing event because 
certain op-ed uh, writers kicked gamers in the fields in a very real, real way. They just managed to, because of how personal the attacks were, um, I'm not going to call them out because I don't want to remind people of them because that's just going to trigger people all over again. But there, there have been some pieces written about either individual games or gaming or gamers as a whole that you can't claim as anything but a personal attack. And personal attacks, attacks register as more personal than a disagreement over ideas. Now, some people take certain ideas very personally because of, of personal experience, and that's absolutely valid. And that's the other thing that we have to keep in mind. If you can critique without rejecting, you're going to have a better result. And I disagree rather emphatically with some people over the idea of what they consider criticism. I consider just outright rejection. They infuse, they refuse to engage. They refuse to give benefit of the doubt. They refuse to have a dialogue. And I am not interested in engaging with people like that because there's going to come a point where I am going to take it personally. I am going to lose my shit and that doesn't benefit anyone. Well, primarily me. It doesn't benefit me. What's the point? And I think that a lot of people in gaming have had a huge amount of rejection, not criticism, but rejection in their life. And therefore, they are trying to engage with this stuff through at a haze of chronic pain based on rejection. I mean, the whole stereotype of a nerd is one based on rejection by more quote unquote popular kids. And this is something that people who write on gaming sites, I think, need to be more aware of. I also think, though, that people who write about games and talk about games for a living have to start being more honest about our own feelings of rejection. Because I know plenty of people, they go out there and it doesn't bother me, my haters are my motivators, and then they privately, you know, get them drunk and they spew about how hurtful these things are, or they end up imploding and writing columns like that. Rejection hurts. You can get better, you can up your pain tolerance using some approaches, but that doesn't mean it's not hurting. That just means you get better at it. And you have to be careful not to become so callous that you're not aware of how you're hurting other people. And I think there are some people in gaming that have have crossed that event horizon and therefore it's time to hang it up. They, they are so detached from human reactions to things that they, they really are no longer aware of how much psychic damage they are doing to other people. And so... I just wanted to bring that up as a point of science because I think it's a little understood. I think people talk about these things without actually understanding the mechanics of how these things work. And therefore, they, they recommend solutions that are just not workable. The all just don't let it bother you. Toughen up. Well, we know that if someone fixates on something, if someone tries to suppress, it actually gets worse the feeling gets bigger. What they've actually found is the way to kick in those natural painkillers more emphatically, more strongly, is to do something enjoyable. Get away from, uh, it's, it's like the, the thing about overtraining. Anybody that exercises, <laughs> sucks. But um, if you overtrain, you go out of good pain and into bad pain and you actually get diminishing results. You become more prone to injury, permanent injury. It's the same with emotions. You, you can only 
charge ahead through unpleasantness for so long. Your body needs rest. Your body needs breaks. And you are not helping yourself by denying that truth. Good trainers will not overtrain you. It amazed me how much bodybuilders take naps. <laughs> Emotions are the same. If you overtax an emotion, you're going to pull it just like a muscle. And you're going to end up with some disorders that are really hard and really expensive to get back into working order. So be aware of that when you have a really negative experience, a really negative reaction to an article. Try to identify the point of rejection so that you can isolate that and help yourself be less hurt because, man, it's not worth it. But also be more aware of the rejections you dole out to other people because more likely than not, you are causing them at least a little bit of pain and them saying it doesn't bother them is not necessarily something you can you can rely on because a lot of people say things don't bother them when secretly they really do. Trust me, I got burned taking people at their word more times than I can count. So lesson learned. Uh, hope that was helpful. I will include the link to this article and uh, one other one I think are helpful on this point. But thanks for watching.